nine one thousand. So let me pick up on that headline I mentioned there. Almost six million Brits would start smoking cannabis if it was legalised. Two major surveys found that huge numbers of young adults, including parents of primary school pupils, would be tempted to take up the habit. Further analysis found that half a million kids have also tried the drug. No surprise there. The findings have prompted fears for mental health and crime levels, given the evidence linking high-strength cannabis to psychosis. It does, of course, divide the room. Should we legalise this drug? Should we legalise cannabis? Let's speak with Peter Reynolds, who's president of CLEAR, Cannabis Law Reform, and Frank Young, Editorial Director at Civitas, the think tank. Good afternoon to you both. Um, Peter, interesting that six million people would give it a go. They'd go for a bit of weed if it was legal. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a speculate. That's speculation. It's a projection based on a survey. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's a typical Daily Mail headline, isn't it? Of course, the thing that we have to most important facts that comes out of this survey it's a very useful survey i think the facts in it are very very useful indeed and the most important fact that comes out is that a majority of parents want to see cannabis legalized and, and I, I would suggest that that's that's because they recognize in the same way that uh, justin trudeau did when he introduced legalization in canada that's you know what we need to do is restrict access to cannabis and control it uh, and the most foolish thing that successive governments have done for 50 years now is completely abandon control of cannabis to organised crime. They've, they've abandoned our children to organised crime and allowed street dealers to, to run wild. But you, 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 you don't, you don't do, get rid of organised crime or street dealers just because you legalise something. You, they, they can still well, be I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, we, we've got some facts. Apart from polls and speculation, we've got some facts to base this on. You know, in Colorado, the first U.S. state to legalize cannabis in 2012, the Healthy Kids Colorado study, which comes out every year, is run by the Colorado state government, has shown there are 35 percent less te fewer teenagers, I should say, 35 percent fewer teenagers using cannabis now than before it was legalized, and uh, and that that's been the same throughout America. Adult use has, has slightly increased or stayed about the same while legalization is taking okay. place. But universally throughout America, the underage use has, has, has gone down. Frank Young, all the evidence there, Peter was quoting Colorado as one example, uh, suggests that it's a, a bit of a no-brainer when it comes to legalising cannabis. What do you think? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, um, I'd like to think that um, the survey that we produced today is a little bit less, a little bit more than just simple guesswork. Um, this is a uh, poll of 4,500 adults, which makes it... Uh, one of the largest surveys um, any UK think tank has ever conducted on cannabis use. Um, and what it shows really is that if we uh, went down the route of legalising cannabis in this country, we would see um, a very significant increase in the number of people who would try well, cannabis. Not what's happened uh, anywhere else. Using cannabis already. And when we speak to parents, parents are rightly and understandably very concerned about the impact of cannabis legalization and they actually say that it would make their job much harder as parents to stop their children using cannabis and they actually back uh, governments and the police force taking really tough measures to stop children uh, picking up the cannabis habit but peter when, when you hear those kind of concerns through a fairly substantial poll do you think that it's a rather strange place we've arrived in as a nation where, remember, you know, we try to stop people smoking, we try to get people to drink less, we try to do healthier things. Why would we be introducing an additional narcotic or an additional drug in this respect? What, well, good, can, do, what good can come of that? What we should do is exactly what we've done with smoking and getting people to eat healthier food. We should talk about education. Because when you ban something and drive it underground, you drive control of that market into the hands of criminals. And as I said, you know, it, it's not, this survey is very useful, very valuable. And all the hard facts in it actually support the argument for legal regulation. You know, I mean, I mean, you say parents are very concerned about the children using cannabis, and of course they are. And I would be very concerned about my, my children using, using cannabis. But a majority of parents agree with legalization. Well, I mean, I would say, I would say on that. Okay. It would, give, 
think it will give us control over the market. So it's uh, so legalizing gives control, Frank. Uh, it's barely a majority, and it's hardly a mandate. Uh, um, so I think we've got a long way to go before we convince well, the well, British I mean, public. How you say, you you say it's barely well. a majority, but your projection of 16, six, 6 million is based on a figure of just 16 percent. So you say the more people actually, well, well, it's only 16 percent now, which means 84 percent wants is uh, extremely robust in the sense it's taken from ONS population data. So you're perfectly able to take from one it's of the large projection. samples. Well, of course it's a projection. Um, we yeah. actually don't know what would happen because none of us are, are you know, future tellers, but it's the best indication but, that they we, we, uh, you we know know what has happened wherever the legalization has taken Hold on place. a minute. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. This is, um, this is you know, of great concern to parents. And actually what we... I mean, the point you make about... And they, and they agree with legalisation. A, a barely by a, a majority. So yeah, they do. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't they think do. We, I don't think somehow we can extend from this that there is some great um, uh, groundswell of opinion for, for legalisation in this country. Actually, well, we when the the six million million people are going to start uh, black and minority ethnic parents, they are some of the most concerned in this country that politicians and people the most who the who most represent them actually are, are peddling. Uh, this uh, this uh, approach because that they allow us to the pedal cannabis. Very what we concerned. should be doing is giving it to licensed retailers who will set age limits. The first uh, way right. to stop using yeah, cannabis is to place age limits on our access. What what do you say, yeah. Frank? Uh, okay, okay. okay. You say, just, 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 so no. you, just so you don't both talk over each other, let me just throw this into you, Frank. I mean, uh, you're hearing it there from Peter that all the evidence around the world. He cited Colorado. There are other places that actually, when you, it sounds curious to some that you know you make something legal in order to have fewer people partake, but ultimately that is only really achievable if you're in control of it. And all the while it's in a black market, it's being sold on street corners, there is no control. Making something taboo, by definition, in ver we know that from prohibition and the like, will always um, mean that there are people who want to s seek it and, and find it and use it. And the best models we have at the moment, says Peter, is that actually controlling it, making it legal, is the best way to begin to address those concerns that you mentioned of people like parents? Well, it's a wonderful um, magic wand, but it simply isn't true. And I have a great deal of faith in sort of the, the common sense of British parents who only 8% of them in this large-scale poll said that legalising uh, cannabis would stop drug dealers on the streets dealing to children. So it would be a boon for people who want to buy cannabis from... Uh, high-end retailers on the high street, heavily taxed cannabis, an expensive premium product. So for our Waitrose shoppers, if I'm allowed to use a, a brand name, you know, this would be a boon. For everyone else who is required, who can't simply afford to buy that luxury product, they would be forced, just as they are with cigarettes now that are heavily taxed, uh, to go onto the streets and to buy their unregulated cannabis as they do Which the is what they do now. Which is what they do now. It, well, it would do nothing. Legalisation would do absolutely nothing to stop um, but you're, um, but, but young all people the evidence having to buy cannabis on the streets. You know, it would just but be a boon. All the evidence contradicts it. All the evidence contradicts you. you know, I mean, you, you, you're, you're the one who's speculating because we have lots of evidence from all around the world that when you put the well, retailing of cannabis into licensed outlets, that fewer children wow. have access to it, that right. harm reduces... That, that, that there's no great increase in adult use, you know, and, 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 and all the facts, all the actual facts in your survey support that, you know, but what you've done is taken... Just, just respond to that quickly, I, if you would, Frank. I, I, well, I'm grateful for the endorsement for our working in <laughs> California, for example, where um, they've taken a great leap into this direction. The illegal market is now three times bigger than the legal market, where... Um, they have taxed cannabis heavily, and in yes. Portugal, academics have now discovered they don't that tax it too heavily in Canada. Have increased by thirty in times. Canada. We simply don't need thirty times in Canada have problems for young people. In Canada, Canada, in Canada, in the space of three years, they've completely turned the situation around. Because in California, what we've had is greedy politicians 
overtaxing it. And only in this way. Well, it sounds like the sort of British know, politicians that we have. <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder if we would end up there. Listen, I, I, I have to step in, but listen, Peter, thank you. Frank, thank you too. Peter Reynolds, president of CLEAR. They stand for Cannabis Law Reform. And Frank Young, editorial director of the Civitas Think Tank and their survey there. 0344 499 1000. I'm always interested in specifically why somebody. I know the short answer will be, well, it relaxes me. Um, but does that become a, 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 a kind of dangerous zone to go down? I, I, I suggest most people who smoke a joint smoke it with tobacco. I know you don't have to. People can vape it and the like. So maybe there's that. But if you get into that spiral of even if it doesn't send you do lally or anything like that, but the idea that you take something because it chills you out, do, does that mean you then become addicted to something? You gave up the cigarettes, you cut down on your drink. Now you're addicted to cannabis. Right? It, might, it might make you feel great, but it's still another addiction. 0344 499 1000. Why do you partake in a bit of weed? Our lines are open. This is Talk TV.